coming up on iPads in the Classroom. We're making the iPad safe for children. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin. And my name is Ashley Rokey. And today we're talking about how you can make the iPad safe for young children especially if you're worried whether they're going to go online or uh, purchase things or anything like that. So if you want to prevent that, there are some safeguards that are actually in the iPad. So let's start. If you go into settings and you go into a general and the word you're looking for is restrictions. Because when you go into restrictions, it'll ask you to enter a passcode. If you don't have a passcode, it'll ask you to create one. So you're creating one, and what you can see is that I do have restrictions, and you have a list of things that are allowed. That means that anybody using the iPad is allowed without any password. But if you disallow it, so for example, you can disallow Safari, and that means that nobody can go online without having the passcode. Now the trick is to not share your passcode with the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be though very careful, because if you want kids to be able to use the iPad effectively and without you, you want to make sure that you're not blocking them from being able to do the things you want them to do on your own. So if they need to come to you every 15 seconds and say, I need to log into this and you need to plug in that number, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that, but you can see that you can disable uh, browsing, you can disable the camera, you can disable FaceTime, you can disable Siri, you can disable AirDrop, which is a way to share documents with each other. So you can control any aspect and again, installing and deleting apps, if you're worried about managing the apps on your device, you just turn that off, turn off in-app purchases, and here you go. So, and I can turn off the whole uh, iTunes store, and that means that now they can't do this. Uh, the other thing that you can say is look at the ratings, and if you don't want anything explicit, you turn that off, and now you're uh, restricted anything that is not rated or rated explicit will not come in. Only things that are rated clean will come in, and that's about podcasts and music. Uh, it's not about anything else. Mm -hmm. So if you go online, if you do let them go online, that would be open. But that is a way to manage that and make sure that they're not going anywhere you don't want them to go. So if you're uh, using this in the classroom, you're working with a group of kids and they're taking it and you don't want them to do certain things, this is a way to control that iPad. Now. Remember that if you want to then take that iPad and use it actually personally, you want to disable all of these restrictions because if not, it's going to drive you insane mm -hmm. because every little <laughs> thing you want to do is going to ask you for a password. Uh, the other thing that you can control, and this is something um, a lot of us worry about, is uh, location and everything uh, about privacy. And again, you can control all of that. So you can click on anything like who gets to see my contacts and you can turn it off. If I don't let them see my contacts, it's gone. Uh, if I don't want Google Plus to see my contacts, it's gone. So you can actually control all of these. And uh, that helps, again, make sure that if you're giving devices to kids and you want to maintain privacy and you want to make sure that they're not sharing information or people can't find them based on location, you just turn all of these off. Every new app that has those services will ask you early on, mm. can I look at your photos? Can I use your contacts? Can I send you a notification? And you have to carefully consider if you want that or not. You can easily say no and then enable it. So it'll stay on these lists. It'll just stay as an off one. And it'll ask you, do you want me to use that? And uh, that will open that uh, again. So you can re-enable apps, but they won't ask you again. Um, I advise, especially with notification, always say no, yeah, unless <laughs> you really want notification, because they will send you ads, they will send you reminders, they will send you things, and if you're like me and you have four to five hundred apps, you really don't want <laughs> reminders from every app you have, because that's all you would be doing all day, and most of them are not interesting. So that's a way to control and restrict what kids can do. This is really important because uh, we're working now with a lot of early childhood providers. They want to work with devices, but parents are worried, mm -hmm. and rightfully so, and so are teachers. We're not there at every second. We're not seeing everything. So this is a way to control that. Now that I disabled some of these things, 
Uh, let's see what happens when I try to go online. Hmm. Well, we'll take, we'll, oh, I disabled Safari. That's why I can't see Safari. So, so you can even if you it. restrict access, it's not going to even let you have that as an option, which is why you can't go on it. So it's even simpler. Kids won't even get frustrated, except okay, like me when I can't find it. But that means, again, that you want to make sure that you disable it after kids are done with a device. And you can disable it just by using your uh, password. And now you've got access to everything and no restriction whatsoever. And I can find my, my app again. And what you can see is all of these apps that were restricted suddenly show up again. So uh, that's how to keep kids uh, safe on the iPad. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.